<laughs> you got this. All right. Wait, I can I can do it again. Yeah, just sit down and shut the fuck up because you are now watching a sneaker fanatic motherfucking production. <laughs> okay, so before I start this video, I just want to say, please do not get on here and say anything that you don't want in the video. Simple as that. It's a lot for me to edit. I pretty much upload. I'll edit it and upload as is. Don't say, hey, can you edit this part and edit that part out? Because then I would have to sit there and watch the entire thing over. And that's not something I want to do. So please don't say anything that you don't want to be known. Whether it has something to do with you or anybody else, simple as that. Just don't say it. Simple as that. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna exclude anything. And speaking on that topic, mean what you say. Stand on what you say. Do not be telling me one thing off camera. Now I'm not saying it happened in this video. <laughs> Just don't say one thing off camera and then get on camera and speak a different tune about a situation or a person and then get back off camera and then be on some other shit. Be consistent. Be consistent. Stand on what you say. Mean what you say. If it's how you felt, then it's how you felt, no matter if the camera is rolling or not. If it's what you heard, then it's what you heard, no matter if the camera is rolling or not. Be consistent, okay? I don't want to have to call nobody out. I, I don't. I know people say I'm an asshole and I'm mean and I do this and that. I, I'm really not. If if most people who know me and have conversations with me, I'm a logical thinker. Um, I think it's very hard to get me to change my opinion on stuff that I feel about. But a lot of times the shit I be saying, people think I'm, I'm being mean and shit like that. And it, it, it may be somewhat mean, but it'd be like shit people need to hear. I'm, I'm blunt. Um, I speak sarcasm. The bluntness and the sarcasm people also associate with being mean or rude. How you interpret the stuff I say, hey, I mean, it is what it is. I, it has nothing to do with me. I can't cater to every single person's feelings. That's That's not me. That's not me at all. Not even a little bit. Hey, if you felt that way, oh well. I I hate to say it like that, but I don't care. Xavier is he's entertaining. He's very entertaining. Um he's a storyteller. He spoke to me for, for over three hours. For me it was kinda hilarious some of the stuff he was saying. He's a he's a he's a very good storyteller. Um and when I say that, I mean he be telling stories. How you interpret what I just said? That's up to you. <laughs> the video is long, like I said. Um, so I'm gonna be breaking this video up into different parts. And this video right here is one of four. And this video right here is one of four. Hopefully y'all enjoy it. This is the nigga that did everything in fucking El Paso. Nigga behind everything. From being a being a scrub promoter to an MC <laughs> to a DJ to running his own promotion company. This is a nigga that did it all. And can't too many people people say they did everything. Type shit. Okay. Cause I'm 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 one of one when it comes mm -hmm. to El Paso. Yeah. One of one. Hemothy, him, Hemi, whatever you want to call it, bitch. Like <laughs> Hemi. I don't give a fuck. I was him type shit. So hmm. this is I gonna be this is gonna be one of the most key videos in this whole Bullshit. So like, I've been waiting on you to to do other people. I'm doing Mike, 
uh, Lowry, uh, Brent, Cora. I don't know Cora, and I don't know um, Damien, but I'm doing both of them. Um, who else am I doing? Make sure you're doing all the key players now. You just name all the key players. Well, I don't I don't know them like you. Like, so that's why I was asking like other people. That's how I got Cora and Damien, because Rio recommended both of them and Ron recommended Cora. Cora was a key piece. Rio also recommended um Amanda. Chewy, that's that shit gonna get ugly. I can't wait till she do hers. She said she don't want to though. She was saying because that shit, that shit finna get ugly and nasty, and she's trying to keep the peace. And I totally understand and respect why. He said she's not. Um, she she was thinking about it because Rio told her, but she was like she don't know because. Well, let me actually read what she said exactly. Let me see. You've been waiting to do this, motherfucker, haven't you? She said, I was just talking to Rio about it. I'm on the fence because my story is a lot messier. That's what Amanda said. But apparently it was a lot of fuck shit that happened with, we call her, what they called her Miss Chewy back then. Rio told me some stuff. He said she was like one of the, or like the head bottle girl. And there was a lot of stuff that she was putting the bill on. But then Brent was trying to take money from it. And he wasn't putting in on like the stuff that she was fronting because Brent Brent wasn't f- fronted. Um, this is stuff Rio told me that she told her or, or she told him. And it, it was like a lot of other shit. Ooh, Ron my actually, name, my name Bennett and I ain't in it. <laughs> I actually mentioned um uh, shit, I forgot her name. Maine. And I reached out to Maine. Maine said she would do it, and I was telling her the other people, um, who was doing it, thinking about doing it. And I was like, you know, one of them, she said she didn't want to do it because she ain't had nothing nice to say. And she was like, oh, well, who was it? And I said, I said, man, and she was just like, mm. like <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> so like, I don't, I don't know nothing for real. And that's why I'm trying to, Main said she do it. Amanda, I don't know, but I want to, I want to hear this shit now. It's because like people a lot, a lot of the, a lot of this shit had happened. A lot of this shit had happened after way after you left. Like nigga, you probably yeah. have to only wish that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause I I don't know Cora. I don't know Amanda. Some of these people that's being mentioned, I don't know anymore. Mm-hmm. Real talking about this Damien dude. I don't know him. So that, it's like, that Dame is a very key piece. I want to say he was damn near day one GFM type shit. So he came in. Hold on, we gonna we gonna get into the introduction. Then we got we gonna go into you. All right, so um, I got Xavier. Well, I'm, I'm gonna use your old name, Xavier Pro Fresh Hill. This <laughs> one, of his, one of his first names. Um, back when he was promoting with Pro Fresh. Um, he started off as a promoter. He went into the MC the MC role became a DJ, and then had his own promotion team from what I found out from uh, two other people that I interviewed. So as far as the nightlife, every aspect of it, it's it's um, it, it's a debate, I guess you could say, on who the best MC of El Paso is, because some people say in Rio, and then I have other comments, because I actually made a Facebook post, and some people mentioned Xavier. Um, as far as the nightlife and roles in the nightlife on the club scene, Xavier has done it all. People who watching this, who know Xavier, know this about him. So, um, yeah. So, like, how did how did this shit start? I know, I know. Like, we was in the army together. We was in the same company. We was going to the club and shit like that. But I have no clue how you like got into. The promotion side even as much time as we even spent together like i just remember you just was a part of them niggas and that's what you was doing at the club and shit um at one point it just i just turned around and you was just doing it one day oh um, you ain't 
You ain't asked me like, hey, you you trying to get on? I wouldn't have anyway. I mean, I've had people try to, people even thought I was promoting with ProFresh, um, but you yeah, just. You had, you had such a big fucking following with, because um, you had grown up in El Paso, so your parents were stationary and shit. Well, I know your pops was. Your pops yeah. Was. yeah. Um, let's do a precursor to the madness and then we're going to fast forward. Um, but for, a lot of people don't know this shit, right? So my aunt's boyfriend who had lived with me back in Louisiana and shit, he was a DJ. And I always had an infatuation with nightlife. Um, watching music videos, when the music videos was actually worth a fuck, BET uncut, I ain't got to go too motherfucking far. Um, and then I started going to the teen dances at the little club back in my little town and shit. Um, you know, I would be in there and shit and just watching everybody have fun and all this shit. In my mind, I always like fucking, how can I be a part of this shit? Like, how can I just simply just throw parties type shit? You get what I'm saying? So let's fast forward 2011. I'm coming with dates and venues so niggas would know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about because I know what I'm talking about because I've been there for long, right? 2011 was when me and you had met out there over in, uh, I forgot the name of that damn gym on Bliss when we first played fucking uh, Ultimate Football. That's when we had met. They had yeah. Super Gym and they had Big's Gym. Uh, it was on man. It was on um West Bliss. Um, fucking, we started hanging out. We walked the bam. I said, bro, let's go out. I got there. I got to El Paso like February 2011. The first concert I ever attended in life was Juvenile, that Mardi Gras weekend. We went to that, I drug you to that fucking show, nigga. I drug you, didn't want to go. I said, bro, it's Juvenile, this shit gonna be lit, we out the band. Oh, it was at Tricky Falls. Oh, I'm vaguely remember. You on that South El Paso Street. I remember addresses, so niggas know about it. I'm vaguely remembering a time where I didn't want to go out. And you had to go out. But but something else happened. If I had gone out, I would have been like in the middle of something. I forgot. We're gonna fast forward to that. Don't even worry about it. I got you. So I'm not talking about when I got arrested. We not talking about that, bro. That, ooh, that went that way later, nigga. You you fast forward from okay. okay. so, that. Okay. It was a juvenile concert that happened around Mardi Gras weekend. Juvenile came in the town. I told you about this shit at work. When we was at HHBN, I was like, bro, juvenile, he come in, you know, we from the same state, Louisiana, about bouncing, bro, let's go. He was like, bro, I don't know if I'm fucking this shit. I had to convince you. I ain't had no party. So I'm like, bro, I'm really trying to go to this fucking concert. You gave in eventually. He was like, damn, this whole ass nigga keep telling me to go to this concert. Well, fuck, I'm going to go. This shit was actually lit. Rio was hosting that motherfucking concert, right? So we went to Trick Falls. That shit was lit. I'm not even going to lie to you. Juvenile did all his heat. And we walking down the street perpendicular fucking to, uh, we walked past the bus station. Like we drove, we, you parked like down the street type shit. Cause we drove to, that's when you had that old school feel. I think I have videos of this day too, at, at least the concert, cause you know I was recording everything. I might, yeah, you, I might could plug that in while you're talking about it. So fucking, uh, we went and I was like, bro, the concert was decent. But the hype man was in it. I remember saying this shit like it was just, and it was Rio. I was talking about Rio. I was like, oh, I could do that shit better than that nigga who off the bat. So the summer of 2011 comes. Okay, new player to the board. I got to introduce people because I watched your previous shit. Uh, we was going to M Bar on the regular. That's off of fucking Mesa. I don't exactly remember that address like I remember the other one. But we was at fucking M Bar, right? And so fucking, um, and then M Bar was on Friday, Union was on Saturday type shit. That's when before, way before they built the baseball park, it was a bridge that came down and the parking lot was on top of the bridge. And then we walked down the bridge to go fuck Union. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Hey. I see, I see. Oh, 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 oh,
And so I'm uh I met a girl at M Bar. We started linking up. We walked the band off the apartments off Ren. I forgot what they used to be called back in the day. And so that's why I met Uche. Uche was this dude. I ain't know really too much about him. She he was a friend of a friend. And that's when I was driving that gold Nissan Central back then, the 2006 one. Everybody remember that car. If you fuck with me, you remember that car. Uh so fucking, I used to take him down. Because it used to be free before 10 for everybody. And so that nigga used to be like, bro, just take me to the club. We're going to go in and go turn up type shit. And I was like, whatever, because I was messing with of uh, 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 the girl he was messing with his friend. We walked the band, so I didn't give a fuck. And so, like, I got tired of fucking taking him down there type shit. And I was like, man, put me on to the promotion type shit. You know what I'm saying? At Union. So I want to say that next week, that's when I had met Brent, Larry, and Sincere, right? You probably, you remember those cast characters. Sincere, that sounds familiar. I would have to see the face. I swear I haven't found this nigga. He probably like, nigga off the face of the map right now. I ain't heard from this nigga about like 10 years. I, ain't, I haven't heard from him. And so like Uche had introduced me to Brent, Larry, and Sincere. Bro, why do you not think of Larry, yo? I need to get Larry on this bitch. You need to get in contact. Larry was a key player, bro, nigga. Why? Well, I don't know why, how he slipped my mind. Little Larry, man, come on. You know, I'm doing way back, way back. Mind you, not mind you, this is 2011. Every time I talk to somebody, y'all mention somebody else, and I be like, I got to get that person. Just like Ron mentioned Maine. You mentioned that Uche, Larry. Like, I keep... Forget it's so many people. Man, go ahead, keep going. Man, so um, so I had met, I think Laro still might be in the army or some shit. I that nigga fast track, like he made staff star so damn fast. This shit was crazy. I don't know what MOS he was. So this was like back in the day when it was like Larry, Sears, other nigga, Carletta was in the mix. Um he was promoted. Ooh. Carletta. I think she was, you know, you know, Larry and Carletta, they was a whole entire thing. You know? Yeah, I know about them too, but I didn't know she was. You no, know, it's actually from she was, I mean, she would have, she was, you know, in cahoots with a promoter. You walk it, man. Okay. So, so um, I started meeting with them, and so Brent was like, all right, you're going to stand out on that corner. It was on the corner of fucking San Antonio and Durango, I believe. That's where the corner of Black Pearl was at. You Bro, not you being a corner boy. <laughs> telling people to come and, hey, come fuck, with, come fuck with Union. Come fuck with you across the street from Black Pearl. Uh, so, like, literally, I caught everybody that came down the bridge. Then they across the light. And I would tell people, hey, you know what I'm saying? Come to Union, come to Union. I was out there with Sincere, right? So... A little bit of time passed. Now, mind you, we're going back and forth between, like I said, it was M Bar Friday, Union Saturday. Right? Saturday. right. So, like, really, M Bar, you didn't really have to really be outside because, like, M Bar was that shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, M Bar was up there. Like, that little ass motherfucking spot, bro, ain't about big as my damn apartment, but that bitch was lit. I'm not going to even hold you. Right. And so, um, so it started getting cold outside. And I ain't feel like going in the club at midnight. So, you know, towards, you know, the colder months of fucking October, November, December, January, shit started getting cold. So I was like, all right, cool. My funky ass need to find a way to, well, let me backtrack a little bit. So when you found out I was actually promoting, doing shit post on my Facebook page, he was like, nigga, what the fuck? You was like, nigga, what the fuck? You doing shit? You a promoter now, nigga? Like, what the fuck? We play video games every day. Nigga, you ain't telling me shit. You just tell me to come to the club. I'd be like, bro, you good. I was like, nigga, I ain't paying for shit. That was you. I was like, bro, you ain't got to worry about paying for shit. You with me. And you was already a social influencer before social influencer term ever came out. So, like, 
Oh shit! Oh, Xavier, you be with the nigga with the shoes. He good. You know what I'm saying? You always walk in the door with me. No funny, no fugazi shit. Then when everybody in the unit started bopping out, none of them niggas paid. Like, come on now. Like, I had it like that. You know what I'm saying? So it started getting cold. And I'm like, I would come in the club at like midnight. That's when really like Rio, it was Rio and Trayvon at Union. Trayvon, he goes another character to the board. Trayvon was with, um, I don't know if he really MC for Ground Hard, no shit like that. He a DJ now, but like that was the two MCs that was at Union. And so from like 2011 to like the, I want to say like the, uh, yeah, 2011, 2013, it was mainly MBAR and Union. The MBAR had clothes on some dumb shit because Peoria was open right next to it. You know what I'm saying? Out of like, Peoria. Come on now, I'm right here with you, man. You got to you got, you got, you got, pay attention, nigga. Catch up. Oh, trust me, I don't, I don't forget shit. So fucking, they had their little beef with the promoter over there. He eventually became a Ciroc boy. I forgot that motherfucking name. He not important. And then fucking, um, that's when Pro Fresh had this little bullshit with Grind Hard because M Bar would be at Pro Fresh would be at M Bar on Fridays, but Grind Hard would be at Union on Fridays. And then they had Saturday all day night. And so. During that time, when I started in seeing, I didn't want to be out. I really didn't want to be out in the cold. And like I said, everything I'm saying right now is from my point of view. Don't nobody getting their feelings. I'm cool with everybody right now. Don't take this out of context. But I looked at Rio and Trayvon. I was like, man, these niggas ain't doing this shit fucking right. Plus, the niggas come to the club late as fuck. So DJ Mark X, another, another player that comes to the board right now. Um, he actually taught me how to DJ, cool ass DJ, one of the best DJs I've ever met in my life when it comes to like character, performance, all of that other shit. Um, I used to go up there and grab the mic before the niggas coming to the club and me emulating what niggas was doing on mic. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to try to emulate what they do and put my own spin to it type shit. And so that's when I had named myself exclusive when I started emceeing. So it usually you it was really Rio, Trayvon, and me with MC at the club. I used to open. Trayvon used to come in a little bit. Rio would close out. Rio was the most familiar motherfucker there. Um, Rio was there long before we got there doing shit. You know, his story ties into this one. And so, like, um, EJ, a, a, another person that, that comes up, he was in cahoots with him and tiny and they used to do like events to shit together down at tricky falls and then that shit had kind of sort of went left and all that other shit so it was really like ej and brent at that time so i want to i want to fast forward to like 20 the beginning of 2013. hold up before you fast forward okay so we already passed the promoter story it seems like you transition into you being you doing the mc shit i'm in the mc shit right now Okay, we we done with the promoter side. Mm-hmm. So Brent put you on. You start off as a corner boy promoting, right? Then I became a promoter. I stopped getting off the corner. Fuck that <laughs> shit, cause I'm pulling people in there. <laughs> okay, you got off the corner, but you were still a promoter. Um, so before exclusive, did you have a different name? No. <laughs> no, nigga, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nigga. Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> I gotta be like this with everybody. Like, all right, okay. <laughs> all right, keep going. I was just Xavier, nigga. Like, I was just old ass Xavier. What, man? Little nerdy, little nerdy, little nerdy ass fit nigga that won't glass his country as okay. hell. This your story, okay. All right. I ain't, so, had, no, I ain't had no name. Okay, so where was you at? You was about to um, fast forward. I remember I stopped you, but you was, okay, you, so we fast forward to like, you be doing the rewinds and the fast forwards. Okay, so the end of 2012 going into 2013. So me and EJ had started getting close and shit, and he would tell me like all the inside shit mm-hmm. that was going on. How close? Huh? I said, how close? This nigga telling secrets and spilling tea and doing dumb shit. But I refuse to not say shit about what niggas had going on. I don't remember everything, but like that nigga would be like, hey, 
this, 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 and this. And I'd be like, what the fuck I got to do with it? I ain't got my goddamn problem. I ain't trying to block my little $50 bag at that point. Nigga, fuck that. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, so it was $50 a night for promoting or uh, what was the incentives of promoting actually? Let's back up to the promotion side. So the incentive of promoting. I know you used to get us in. You used to be able to get us in with just that was, the, that was the main point. And then when we was at M Bar, he was like, hey, we're going to start paying promoters. And then like they had like this little generic flyer that was made. We put our name on it type shit. Whoever got the most people in, they would get paid like, with like 30 bucks or some dry shit like that. I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to be the best. I didn't give a fuck. Okay. Nothing, against, nothing against nobody, regardless of what I did, DJing, MCing, um, uh, promoting, DJ, MCing, run my own club promotion. I just wanted to be the best. I just wanted to be that nigga. That was my, that was my thirst for, for everything, right? A lot of people don't know this shit, so I might as well reveal it. I'm from the was there a lot of y'all promoters? Did y'all have like monthly meetings, weekly meetings? Like meetings that back then, like nigga, we would meet up at the club and chop it up and say dumb shit. And then we just go out and just did our thing. That was back in Union and Envy. Okay. I mean, like, so it was like no real organization. Yeah, it, it was more like the group chat and shit. Like we would talk in the group chat and discuss shit in the group chat, but like actual like face to face means like, hey niggas, this is what we did the hey niggas, this is what we about to do. We walked the bam. Here goes the flyer, drop, drop, drop the flyer, and just you know, shit like that, group chat. But like face to face means I don't think it really written down like that. If it did, I wasn't involved. Now I'm looking back at it, I didn't really give a fuck because I didn't feel like I really fit in with their inner circle like that. I didn't care like that. Okay. Yeah. So like you tell me what the fuck's going on, what weekend, what we doing. I will post the shit, keep it moving. You get what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't trying to be in folks' inner circle. Now, if you, I ain't going nowhere unless I'm invited. So if you ex, if you be like, hey, Zay, we doing this, I'll pull up. But like, all that little clicking shit that motherfuckers used to do and who out the bam, I didn't give a fuck about that shit back then. Like, I hung out with y'all niggas in the unit. Like, y'all was always gang. So like, I feel like if I was going away and doing shit, then they would take me away from y'all. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm fucking with the niggas I know day one when I got there El Paso. You know what I'm saying? That's where my loyalty lies, because that's all the fuck I knew. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go into undiscovered waters and doing dumb shit. And I think I kept that same mentality throughout. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we fast forward. We're going to fast forward to, because there ain't really too much shit happening in. I started grabbing the mic before niggas came in. Niggas just snatched the mic out of my hand. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. What the band? They ain't going to tell you that shit. They just trying to. What? Yeah, they be like, man, give me the mic, nigga. And I'll be like, okay. Like, I ain't want to start no shit. You know, I was a little nigga. And both of them niggas were bigger than me back then. And, uh, I'm like Floyd Mayweather. I picked my fights wisely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, fucking. They was both bigger than you back then. I mean, them niggas still bigger than me now. But <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was trying to get at. <laughs> you said it back then like they still not bigger than you. <laughs> All right, I, mean, I mean, shit. I mean, motherfuckers be like, say, say, run a fade. I'll be like, well, bitch, let me hold my own. Shit, I can okay. hold my own. You're going to respect me. Shit, but nah, it, it won't never get down to that. I don't think so. Um... So the pro fresh breakup, all right. Here's a key event that niggas don't know. Everybody, like I say, everybody's just customers and just popping out and doing crazy shit, right? Um. So EJ came to me one day. He was like, he was like Xavier. Look, I got a spot right down the way from Union. It's called Envy, right? Need you to come fuck with me. Uh, I need you to come fuck with me. Now it's your choice. Now, would you rather be third place to to Rio and Trayvon, and it be your own stage, or you could just be third place and just be with them niggas type shit? Some bullshit went down with me and Brent and grind hard. They came together, we walked the bam, and they kind of sort of took me out the game. I don't know the exact story, but the nigga pretty much called me. He was like, nigga, come fuck with me and Envy, 
or you could fuck with them niggas over there. You could be the last nigga on the on the roster. I was like, they're gonna fuck with you. I ain't trying to share shit with nobody. Fuck them niggas. That was my mindset back then. I wanted to be that nigga, so I had to kind of so like isolate myself. So he's like, I right, bet. So I want to say like the next week or the following week, that's when I started MCing on my own at Envy. That's when DJ Ghostfingers was in there. I do not know where that nigga's at right now. Uh, DJ Red One, who is now Jason Craig, who's fucking running El Paso with Johnny Cage right now doing XM Radio and dumb shit. Um, I start MCing over there. Uh, I remember I did the, this is, this is 2012, I believe. Yeah, this is, this is going into 2012. No, nah, this, now nah, this is going into 2013. Uh, I was about to leave and go to, I left to go to Korea in April. Yeah, I left to go to Korea in April. So, um, I did a cut, I emceed a couple events. That's when the Harlem Shake came out. Slim from 112 came, B King came, Mike Epps had made a celebrity because Mike Epps had, a, um, my case had a comedy show and he came in for the after party type shit. Um, this was the first time that me and Rio was about to fight. Me talking shit on the fucking microphone and his ass was MCing. I said some slick shit. The nigga Rio tried to barge goddamn DJ booth and shit. I said some slick what? ass shit. I said some slick shit because them niggas at that time, they was losing and everybody was coming to envy type shit. And that's when Brent Rio and every, pretty much everybody from Union had came down there type shit. And I guess Brent and EJ had men that they little relationship on some money shit. So the first night I seen Rio in there, my mind was like, ooh, this whole ass nigga in here. He ain't got no microphone, but I got one. I said some fly shit. That nigga tried to come DJ with whoop my ass. Security came. I just stood there. I was like, bro, I'm just gonna take if he get if he if he grabbed my ass and fuck me up, it just what he I said what the fuck I said. I didn't give a fuck. That was the first time me and Rio was about to fight. There's another time, but we're gonna fast forward to later. Man. So um talk shit, walk the band. And then oh fuck, I'm forgetting venues. Um uh, V Bar. We used to go to V Bar on Thursdays. Then Union used to be on Thursdays. That was the shit. Them third, I ain't gonna lie to you, them Thursday nights at Union and V-Bar, them shit used to be lit in Friday and Saturday. All the bitches used to come out and all kind of shit. And I'm not gonna discuss what kind of activities me and you fucking had did on Thursdays, knowing we had to be at work Friday. But you was PT stud, so you ain't had to be in formation any fucking way. So you scored 300, it don't matter. But I was the one that was struggling. You know, Thursdays and shit happened, and we walked the bam, and then let me see. Yeah, it's it's like that, niggas gonna be assuming we was fucking together or some some wild shit. You no, can't, I'm, you can't I'm say saying, stuff like that. I don't know. Nah, you it, gotta be mindful of how other people think. Well, I just need niggas just calm down. Just know that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just need you to not say shit like that. Okay, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say shit like that. Because people gonna really like gonna that. think, oh, they must have been fucking together or some or some crazy shit. We never did no wild shit like that. But just know, just we know we, own, we did our own things. Yeah, we did our own things separately. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like I'm that's when I feel like me, like you was on nigga. like every nigga has done. Yeah, um, everybody, everybody do their own thing. But just know them Thursdays and got them union and got them union and and um V bar. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's when I had the most. Pressure back then with bitches. I'm not going to lie to you. Like that's when I had the most pull. Who would ever thought? So fucking. Um. Let me see. So envy. I ain't trying to forget shit because I want everybody to know that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Look. Um, so this is what I remember. Um. Rio saying this one time, but he was saying basically the only re the only reason EJ took you because. You is cheaper to pay than him. Flashback. Don't whack, why am I still I got it? the cut because you know why? Because you cheap to pay. Is that? Hey, say it again for the that? camera. Okay, listen. Look, say it again for the camera. <laughs> you can go to you and hype up 10, 20 people. <laughs> well, I got a whole goddamn house with five, six, seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> How are you here? Right. He said, you ready? You ready? What's <laughs> good? It doesn't matter. He can host 500, 600 people. But he don't know how to fucking control these motherfuckers oh, wow. like I do. Because the last okay, time I recall, so... no, nigga, please. <laughs> the last time I recall, the last time I recall, I got 
got a call like, hey, this nigga's getting clowned over here at fucking Envy. It was like, this nigga was like, hey, where all my motherfucking niggas at? Nigga said, nigga, you fucking whack, nigga. Get the fuck off the mic, okay, nigga. But if I'm whack, why am I still I envy? got the car because you know why? Because you cheap to pay. I'm Polo, nigga. You oh, fuck yeah. yeah. That's what the fuck. Oh, oh. Glasses right now, nigga. Please look. So, so, please look at me. So, please look at me. So now, so now, so now I have. You don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. I am motherfucking hype man, Rio. This is what I do. I got a thirty nigga. I got a thirty people. You know why? You know why? It's called training. How many times you see me there, bro? You never sent you there, nigga. You just a, you a pearl type of me. Oh, you are. Shorter than me, he ain't better than me. <laughs> oh, he ain't never gonna sound like me. I heard you using my material. Do something, Brit. Is he using my material? <laughs> hey, I heard, I heard you he was using hey, my material, dude. This has nothing to do with my material. Hey, this has nothing to do with pro pressure. That's me. Anything like that. These niggas is on some other shit. You're not gonna win, nigga. You can talk shit all day. You're not gonna win. Put swag to you. Yes. Look at my niggas in here. You know where to go. He is so. And since you, and since you wanna go. So there. Sorry he wanna you. go there. Hey Spencer, Spencer, feel so Spencer. Sorry for you. hey Spencer, he feels sorry for me, right? Since I feel so sorry for feel... you, hyping up 50 people. He feels sorry for me, right? He feels sorry for me, right? Why are my bitches bad? He got a musty bitch at the club. Oh, <laughs> also, you ain't never fucked no ugly bitch since you've been here. No. <laughs> I ain't never fucked no bitch. I fucked fuck plenty of bitches. I fucked plenty of bitches. What am I doing now? 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 What do you Who you fuck? Who you fuck? Cause last time I heard you giving bitches something. Who that fuck? Oh, 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 o
And my mindset was at that time, and fuck that nigga, I would take any amount of money or do shit free necessary to just be on top. Like, ever since I've been a promoter and shit, I always had rivals. You know what I'm saying? The competition would made me want the shit more and made me hungry type shit. You know what? The only reason that you are, you went into that MC role was because of Rio. I just found that out from speaking with Rio. I hope Xavier see this shit because this shit wasn't random. He wasn't randomly picked, bro. He was he was scouted and he was chosen. This nigga was chosen to be who he was today. Cause I, I bet you any money. I, I bet you he probably would have been anything else besides a DJ or host. He would have been anything else. Um Like let's be real. I'm I'm about to he be was real. Loud. You know that right. I thought I could always do this shit better than that nigga, and I did it. So, yeah, if you want to say that's the reason why, that's fine. Rio know I fuck with him when we already had this convo. Uh, did you watch me and Rio? I watched the entire thing. Okay, you watched the entire thing. But, yeah, like I was trying to tell him, when I seen you doing the promotion and then the MC shit, in my eyes, because as much time as we spent together, like, chilling at work, outside of work, just... Niggas knew it was me and you. Um, it was, I was just being me, to be honest. Yeah, I always, that fit you. Like, from music that you would put me on and shit, that Trill for Life is still one of my favorite goddamn mixtapes. <laughs> like, you motherfucking right, man. You used to put me on a lot of music and how you was, like, in the army. Like, I was telling him, you know, being the face or just putting yourself out there not scared nothing that's not some shit and rio would never see this side because because he he didn't he serve know, but, he don't, he don't know. but um i would see this like with you getting out there not scared to call cadence when when other people are even ncos the senior, senior ncos scared to call it or can't call it and you over <laughs> here this is scared here rocking the mic as a fucking E2, E3 and shit. Like, bro, on a consistent basis, able to do that. Bro, literally, it was me. Having niggas hype. Brandon. It was me, Sproul, First Sergeant King ass, and maybe two other people used to call Katie's name. I first okay, I, 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 I knew a couple Sproul, so I had to figure out which Sproul. You talking Long about? Longhead Sproul with the little that, soul like, pack shade pit profile. Pit that whole ass nigga right there. Like yeah. pit bull. <laughs> That nigga ugly as fuck. Hold on, let me ban for real quick, buddy. You know what's so funny? Oh, okay. I'm so I'm glad that you got um you were able to put your fucking phone on something stationary and that you're in landscape mode. I'm I'm impressed. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm I'm glad you ain't fucking walking around on your phone in portrait mode and. It's it's it that be too much for like the videos. It it be like fucking it up. Like I'm glad that you got it like this. See, I'm the nigga you need to make content with, but that's another conversation for later. Hey, we, we, we can. Um. So back Come to on. back to Sproul. Sproul, that yeah, bulldog on face that ugly ass nigga. Like, how can you be a light skinned ugly nigga? Boy, goddamn. <laughs> that nigga look like a pit bull. And also, what I didn't know was him and Webb used to be together. <laughs> bro, he tried to talk to Lassiter. He tried to fucking talk to bro. He used to try to bro anything that looked decent in the battalion, bro. He tried to fuck on, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, that's everybody though. That's every nigga. But um, no, they, they this happened like before I met her, like when it was in Germany and shit. Oh, but shit. um, but yeah, like I was telling Rio, um. Used to rock the mic and shit like that. We on runs and shit consistently. And like, I, I'm just me knowing you and music and stuff like that. When I seen you going into that, like transitioning into the MC and shit, I was like, that fits him. That that really fits him. And then when you started doing the DJ shit, uh, that didn't even surprise me either. Because I knew how you were with music. Yeah. So, like, how he tried to make it seem like the only reason you was doing that shit was because of him. I'm like, no, I, I don't, I don't think so. Bro, I always was if it was him or anybody else. I feel like you would eventually fell into those things. 
And then you got to think about when I had first said at the beginning of the video, my aunt's boyfriend was a DJ. Like, he was one of them old school DJs. This nigga used to have big ass books full of CDs and shit. And I used to go in that nigga's books while he, when him and my aunt was at work, and I used to throw them in my CD player type shit. And I would just sit there and just listen to music, listen to music. I got caught one day because he was missing one of his CDs. They found him in my room. I got my ass beat. That's the that's the way the fuck. But I always had a thing for music and a thing for nightlife and a thing for entertainment. That's what a lot of people don't know. Like as a jit, when I was a child, you know what I'm saying. So, um, I didn't know it. I would uh, adjust to it so fast. But if you're thinking about it from a business perspective, from what. EJ and Brent had going on and they had broke off. The nigga really asked and he was like, bro, you MC, you upcoming, you fresh, you a new face. You can come fuck with me or you can be in third place with them niggas. And I was like, fuck it, nigga. I want the whole shit on my own. Like, even, even with promoting, my rivals was Uche, Larry, Sincere, and the other nigga. Then was MC, it was me and Rio. And then going off into the DJ part that's coming soon, in this, I always had a rival type shit. So mm -hmm. after the Mike, Mike Epps was the last B King Slim for 112 Mike Epps parties I had MC hosted at Envy. So everybody knows the most sad part I PCS to Korea. Um, Korea let me work on my craft, like really, like MC and really dabbling off into it. I'm not gonna say too much about Korea shit because it's irrelevant. We focus on El Paso. So when I got back to El Paso in June of 2013, yeah, because I celebrated my birthday in the States. I made sure that shit happened. So the day I got back to El Paso, I hit the group. I was still in the group chat with all the promote. Well, I wanted a group chat. A GFM had started when I had left. So it was the station. Everybody knows the station. I missed the station. They said the station was lit. It was that motherfucker. It was lit. It was right off the goddamn exit off the freeway. I heard all the stories about this goddamn station. I'm like, damn, let that bitch be open by the time I get back so I can touch that hole. I just got to touch that bitch one time because that I, had just, I had that just left. Uh, I uh, had just uh, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just saying, I was, uh, I was just saying that was my last club before I, um, yeah. So everybody talking about how station was lit, motherfuckers was on stage doing all kind of extra shit. Um, I think DJ Ali had just got there. That's another key player. That's another key person in nightlife back then. He had just touched shit. I want to say Mark X was still there. That's when GFM had came with um fuck. It was really it was Brent, Lee, Green. And a couple of other motherfuckers. I don't know who was all on GFM back then. I didn't even know what GFM stand for. Eventually, it told me God, family, money. Um, it could be God-fearing men. I don't fucking know what GFM stand for. That's when they say, who the fuck is GFM? Bitch, I don't even know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not to throw no shade or no shit like that, but I was told God, family, money. Oh, Uche was still there. It's shit like that. So I'm in Korea. I didn't get orders back to Bliss until like a month before I got back. So when I found out I was going to be in, in a 11 Brigade, I was like, fuck, that's Bliss. And so I hit Brent up. I said, Brent, I'm coming back. Like I'm back in the building. He was like, when you coming back? I told him the date. And he said, I right, bet. That's when Mark X was still DJing. DJ Ali was outside. It was another DJ outside. I forgot his fucking name. He must not be important. <laughs> I think I fucked this bitch. 